Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the Scott Hump Day edition of Today in Sports Betting. Man, we've got some uh, got some barn burners on the schedule there as far as the college goes, Scott. I uh, got a couple of top 25 teams in action, a lot of big numbers out there. No uh no ranked teams playing each other, just I don't know, they're just it feels yeah. like it's about the ninth straight day of that being the case. Yeah, just a, 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 not a lot of excitement out there. I mean, you got a little, uh, you you, get, you got two decent teams squaring off in the Mountain West, and that's probably about it. You got Boise State and Utah State going at it. Those teams have been monkeys in a knife fight. I, I want no part of the action when they get together. Um, what do you got your What do you got your eye on here, Scott? Anything in particular? Well, I have a play today on a matchup uh, taking place between Northeastern and North Carolina. Yeah, so, I highly recommend everybody checking out that video. That's that's an interesting angle that you've got there, and I and I think you've got a winner. So if you haven't checked out Scott's POD, make sure you do that. Um, well, you know, hopefully I, it works out. But looking at the rest of the card, uh, really not much. I know that if you want to look at line movement, Iona plays at four. That line's going from four and a half to six and a half. Iona's been just, I don't know, a Jekyll and Hyde team. So I don't really feel confident back in them with a huge spread. But Quinnipiac's been pretty awful over the last couple of games. So based on line movement, I'm assuming Iona might just take him behind the woodshed. Other than that, if you want to look at some other lines here, of course, shocker, money's coming in on Duke because why wouldn't money be coming in on Duke after it's arguably, I don't know, best player or second best player opted out for the rest of the season? Right. Uh, Sharps don't care, apparently, because Duke went from minus five to around minus six and a half. Uh, could have to also do with the fact that Wake Forest is terrible. So, could be a mix of both. But either way, uh, if you want to take Duke, probably should take it now. I do think that line will probably climb to seven, seven and a half at some point. Do I want to be laying six and a half with Duke? No. Uh, believe it or not, I can find more, I'd say, things that I look forward to than laying six and a half points with Duke. But people... I don't know. I guess they're just going to fade Wake Forest because they're not a very good team. I know Wake Forest almost ended up upsetting Florida State over the weekend. So I don't know if I really want to be running to the window with Duke, but we'll see what happens there. Other than that, though, really not much else, I guess, by, I don't know, just I was going to say Indiana maybe, but that was at four and a half. Now it's six and a half because Minnesota, once again, is terrible on the road. But I feel like six and a half with that Indiana team is a little bit too much because that team just has issues scoring. So really just nothing jumps off the page to me. And I feel like we've been kind of saying that for the last couple of days in college basketball. Uh, sorry, not sorry. Is that a fair way to put it? Cause yeah. Some of, some of I mean, I was able to, I was able to come up with a few, with a few picks, but it's uh it's just, there's nothing that's a compelling matchup. There's, you know, a couple of decent, a couple of different matchups from a uh, from a from a line movement standpoint. Um, my favorite. Uh, this is my favorite thing of. I guess we still call this just an extension of 2020 because 2020 was so bad. Uh, Duquesne apparently had a game scheduled against George George Mason that got canceled. They scheduled a game with Davidson that also got canceled. Okay, well, third time's the charm. So right, congratulations, Duquesne. Why isn't anybody worried about the Duquesnes? Mm-hmm. Um, the Merrimack and Bryant would have been a great game. The Merrimack teams might be the best team in the conference again. Sneaky good. Sneaky good. I had, I had them as a play of the day at some point last week. They ended up killing Central Connecticut. But, yeah, that Merrimack team plays very good defense. What's the, what's Merrimack's nickname? So the – I know they're the Warriors. Are, the Rain, are they the Rainbow Warriors or the regular Warriors? I don't know. I, I honestly didn't know. It, it's I haven't had them this, this year yet. I'm pretty sure they're just the Warriors. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, you anything they, are, you... they are the Warriors. I was right. They are the Warriors. Mm-hmm. Um, how'd, how'd your day yesterday? How'd your day yesterday go? It was that? okay. We split on the uh, split on the premium side. We had um, uh, we had um, do, 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 do we have, uh, the, the Purdue to take care of business, um, and, they and we. Then we yeah, and then we we lost it. We lost in the early game, um, so we go one and one there. Had uh, <laughs> the game that I guess we have to talk about. We had the um, the Suns minus two. 
I got a fantastic number at bet online at like one o'clock in the morning. When they close like eight, seven and a half. Eight, yeah, yeah. I went from eight and uh, twenty-one point halftime lead. Uh, they put up. They put up a hundred and what they what they put up uh, in the first half. We'll put up, uh, uh, I think it was 75 in the first 70, half. 75, that's right. It was 75-54 at halftime. And, uh, you know, I did something I never do. I was I was gloating with you about what, what a lock we had. Because well, my big play ended up being on the team total over 118. I said that was my favorite play on the game. Yeah. Yeah, then you don't have to then you don't have to factor in Brooklyn doing whatever they're going to do on offense, which is kind of the wild card. You know their defense is always going to suck. And, yeah, they had a hell of a comeback. Mm-hmm. They, uh, it was a monster comeback. Uh, Brooklyn led for the first time with 30 seconds left and uh, had the one-point lead. Suns couldn't do anything in transition. Harden comes down there and absolutely buries the dagger mm-hmm. from from distance with about 20, with 18, 20 seconds left. And that was all she wrote, buddy. Um, so, yeah, that was, a, that was a fun comeback. Uh, I wish I'd have been on the right side of it, but mm-hmm. it happens. Um. Yeah, Scott, I don't know. This is a, a lot of weird linemen. Like you said, the Duke seems to be going the wrong way. Wake Forest is dreadful, but Duke's not great on the road. Um, Seton Hall over DePaul. DePaul's been pretty bad, but that's just – there's a lot of these numbers are just a little too tall for me. Well, I was going to ask, by the way, I know that Duke is an awful team that I don't want to spend too much time talking about because Duke is pretty bad. How much do you factor in the, I'd say, departure – of one of their promising top prospects who is now projected to be in the top 10 of the draft or so? Do you think that Duke is going to struggle without Johnson? Because I know that Jalen Johnson kind of was getting his minutes eaten over the last couple of games because he wasn't really that productive earlier in the year. Do you think that him leaving actually has any long lasting impact on this team? Or do you just think that Duke is a little bit too far gone uh, for that to actually matter at this point. I, I, you know what? I think everything matters. I, I think, you know, you got the right coach to probably minimize the effect as much as possible, but I don't know. I don't know how that doesn't matter uh, to a team that's, you know, is, is, is certainly not, uh, um, they're certainly not just rich with talent, uh, at least is so far. So yeah, I think Jalen Johnson, uh, leaving is going to make a difference now, whether it makes a difference, you know, just immediately against this bad Wake Forest team. Um, I don't know. But, yeah, Wake Forest showed us a little something there on Saturday. Um, they should have won the game. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, they certainly uh, – they they had it. They had they had it. They had it won and just uh, – and couldn't and couldn't do it against uh you know and that's the and there's an old adage that overtime is not the uh, not the friend of the underdog, mm-hmm. and that was certainly the case. Although they covered the number easily, um, they're on the road against Florida State. You know, if I'm that's to me that's that's a that's a Deacons or pass there. Mm-hmm. Um, and yourself, you were are you on board with Wake Forest as well? Uh, truth is, if I was probably going to play the game, I'd probably play Duke first half, but I'm not going to touch it. It's one of those spots where I know the money has come in on Duke, Michigan State, Kentucky, pretty much every game this season, and they fail every single time for the most part. And yet money still comes in on on these teams every single game. But I don't know. I kind of – Duke definitely put together a good performance over the weekend against NC State. NC State has got awful, but still I, I will at least recognize that Duke actually looked pretty good for a full game for once. I think Duke might beat up on this team. Wake Forest, I know, has a couple of COVID issues for its – not really any key contributors, but I'm not sure if that really impacted any of the practice scheduling or anything that happened there. But I think that game might be close, but I think Duke will probably win by eight. So I think Duke will probably cover in the end, but I don't really feel great about sprinting to the window to bet at them. Well, you know, and, and Scott, recap for our listeners what exactly happened with Jalen Johnson. So Jalen Johnson came into uh, Duke with the classic new Duke one and done philosophy where he was going to spend one year in Duke, you know, get some TV games, get some exposure, and then leave pretty much automatically and be a top 10, top 15 pick in the draft. So Jalen Johnson had his minutes, I'd say, cut into over the last couple of games because Duke, of course, shocker, if you haven't noticed, they're not very good. Uh, So he ended up deciding, you know what, screw it. Uh, if you're not going to play me, I don't want to be here. So he left, 
and he announced a couple of days ago, I'm going to the draft. I'm opting out for the rest of the season. See you later. Uh, pick up my bags and send them to the airport. So he ended up leaving. And now there was some controversy going on, not about Duke, but about just the media and the fallout of that action on whether or not he actually made the right choice or not, or whether or not he was a full-on quitter for abandoning his team. Truth is, his actions didn't bother me at all because I don't really know what the difference between what he did and what not playing in a meaningless bowl game is for college football players. I think it's the same exact thing. You look at the schedule and say, my team's not very good, and I'm a guaranteed top 10 pick. And according to all the mock drafts, he's projected to go, I believe, sixth right now to the Pistons if the draft would happen based on the current order and everything like that. So my question is, if you're Johnson, your team's not very good, probably not going to make the tournament. You're not playing as much as you wanted to. And your head coach even said about three and a half months ago, you shouldn't be playing the season in the first place. Why do you think that he should be staying in Duke? Because I don't really see the point. Well, you know, that, and that was kind of That was going to be the point that I wanted to talk about because it's only because it's 2020, 2021, do we give him the option of calling it they opted out. Yeah. Any other year, he quit. Correct. He, he quit on his teammates. He quit on his school. He quit on his coach. He quit on the school that recruited him. I'm not going to say he quit on his coach because according quit to coach, everybody. Is no, he, cor- correct. But Coach K said three months ago we shouldn't even be playing the season. So I don't know how you're supposed to say that a guy quit on his team when the coach said particularly he basically quit on his team first because the coach said we shouldn't be playing. <laughs> but they were. It's not, like, it's not like he didn't have them prepared because he felt like they shouldn't be playing. I get it. I'm just saying that Coach – I just don't feel that bad for Coach K in this situation. That's all I'm going to say. No, I don't feel I don't feel bad. I just I feel for bad his teammates, for teammates. Okay, for his teammates, I can understand that. For the yeah. coaching staff, I think that there's no coach I feel I know less remorse for than Coach K in this situation. Yeah, all right, fair enough. But I I don't know. Do I think he quit on his team? I mean, that that's basically what happened. I'm, I'm not yeah. going to go ahead and try to pretend that that's not what happened. Are you okay with college football players missing out meaningless bowl games? No, no, I'm not okay with that either. Okay. No, I think I'm okay with that. So because I'm okay with that in college football, I kind of extend the same courtesy to college basketball players who are playing in a pretty meaningless situation right now. But I, I, do you agree that that's basically the same thing? No, no, it's not. It's like, it's like if a college football player quit in October, maybe, 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 maybe early November. With with four or five conference games left, so no, I don't equate that. If he gets to the, uh, if they they got the regular season, he went through the regular season tournament, the conference tournament, and then quit before the NCAA tournament, then you then it would be an equitable situation. Okay. Well, yeah. either way, I think the principle of just <laughs> having players opt out before the full culmination of the season has already been pretty common in college football. There were a ton of people. We covered all the bowl games. How many bowl games had people in masses just opting oh, out? Oh, I know. No, I'm no, I'm not going to argue that it doesn't happen. No, that's um, what I'm saying. So it happened. Ask me if I'm okay with it. No, I'm not. I'm a, I'm fine. a grumpy old man who wants things the way they were 20 years that's, ago. That's no, fine. I'm not okay. I'm with saying, it. If you're not okay with co- with people in college football sending out games and you shouldn't be okay with this, I'm okay yeah. with it either way. So yeah. I don't really care. No, I ha- I hate them both. I I, I, I I hate both situations. So at least you're consistent. So I, that's right. No, I, I yeah, I'm nothing if not consistent. Uh, I want no one on my lawn. Get off my lawn, everyone. Plus, he's supposed to be a top 10 pick. I don't think he's very good, but, you know, uh, whatever, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you can't get any minutes for Duke, but you're going to make an impact in the NBA. God, you, I, don't, I don't see it. but I love basketball logic. Whatever. Hey, you know what? I'll play. I'm going to play Drake today. I can't really play. blame you there. Drake's I mean, this Northern Iowa team, dude, isn't, and they're not good. And the, the thing is, they're no, they're people they're remember. You guys for injury over the year. What's that? Uh, during the course of the year, a lot of their best players got injured. Yeah, that's very true. They, they had to take a little break. Um, and I, th- I think a lot of these teams get bet on by how they were in the past. You know, everybody remembers Northern Iowa making the tournament and winning a couple games on occasion. Uh, they've owned Drake over the past few seasons, with the exception being last year. But this, this Drake team is, is something special. They showed it against Loyola Chicago. You know, I think we're getting a good price there, minus five. Uh, I'll, I'll play that. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to overreact to one quality performance by Northern Iowa against Valpo in the second meeting. No, and Valpo's a 20-point 20, 20 dog to, to Chicago, mm-hmm. to Loyola Chicago. So, yeah, no. Yeah. No, I'm not a part of that. All right, so 
Anything else? Hey, how about how about the battle for the bluegrass state? A little or no, uh, Vanderbilt's in uh, in Tennessee. Sorry, um, you got Vanderbilt, Kentucky. Are you gonna Are you gonna bag Jay Culler University, or you're taking Kentucky there? Yeah, I got uh, nothing there. Just absolutely nothing. Uh, I know they played the first time, and Kentucky ended up taking care of business. The game was close, but how, I don't know how many times people need to bet on Kentucky and lose their money before they actually, you know. <laughs> Not just this year, but in general. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm completely aware that Vanderbilt is garbage. I'm not trying to say that they're not garbage. I'm just saying that they played the first time in Kentucky. Vanderbilt was getting 11 and a half, only lost by three. Right now, the spread is three and a half. Uh, if I'm playing, I guess I'm laying. But why the hell would anybody want to bet on this game? Does anybody say that, or is that just you making that up? If I'm playing, I'm lying. I've heard it before. Okay. I think it's a good saying. Yeah, that's fine. Um, well, so, I, 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 I wouldn't play it because then I have to watch the game at Vanderbilt, which I hate doing. It looks like they're playing it on a football field. It's not as bad as the Oregon court. No. God, no. The With damn the trees, make it stop. Jeez I think some quirky things are, are cool. Like the Boise State color stuff is fine. Even Eastern Washington with the red courts fine. You know it's not fine. Eastern Michigan with the gray field. That is just it, not pretty. If you want to know how, if, if you want to know how we had to watch games back in the early '60s, watch that. It's, it's like everything is in black and white. Mm -hmm. But if there's one court that royally pisses me off, it's the Oregon Ducks. Can't argue with that. If you haven't seen it, like half of it's done up in trees, mm -hmm. and you have to like. You have to really look to see what it is. Otherwise, it looks like somebody just spilled shit on the court. Yeah. Either that um, or they're using some type of contaminated easel. But, yes. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. It's, it's awful. It's, it's not awful. pretty. But All right. Anyway, uh, yeah. That, that was our brief rant there. The Vanderbilt court's not that nice either. either but it's just, so, it's just it's, it's, it's so huge. They, I was going to say, though, neither are the two teams. So, I feel like it's kind of a perfect fit, don't you think? Nice. Good segue. All right. Let's talk about the NBA, buddy. Let's talk about the NBA a little bit. Let's talk about, uh, hey, Philadelphia gets to come back home. Congratulations, boys. I'm I can't bet against them at home. Fine job and fine job out there on the, on the East Coast. Yeah, they're, uh, they're back in the New York groove, bud, um, so to speak. They've got the uh, entertain the Houston Rockets. <sighs> Pretty big number there. It's, uh, Is that it that big of a number based on Houston's recent results, though? Well, I mean, we're talking about. I guess you're, you're talking. You're talking about since the center's been hurt, right? I'm just saying, if you want to throw out since Wood got hurt, and you want to go through some of these margin of losses. Yeah, I know they've been. I know they've been bad lately. But I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna throw it out here, though. We'll go through these games in order. Played Charlotte, lost by 25. Played New Orleans, lost by 29. Played the Heat, lost by seven. Okay. Played the Knicks, lost by 22. Played the Wizards, lost by 12. I, I don't even know if the spread's high enough, assuming Embiid plays. I know Embiid did not play against Utah. He's expected to play in this game. I know he wasn't injured. They decided to rest him a little bit for load management or whatever you want to call it. But, I mean, Houston's been getting killed. Yeah, and, and Gordon's doubtful. Oladipo's doubtful. Spalding is doubtful. Again, a, a lot of depth there. Um, I mean, this this team just isn't good. I, 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 it hurts because, you know, Houston was trying to have a nice thing going there after they traded Harden, and you're kind of rooting for him to kind of figure something out, maybe claw into a playoff spot. But when your best player gets injured and your team falls apart, I can't back you against a team that should be pretty motivated to get back on track after – the 76ers had a disastrous ending to the road trip in the West Coast. Yeah, lost, lost and failed to cover three straight there at the end of their four-game West Coast swing. Mm -hmm. Those were all against good teams on the road, though. So They were. Know. They were all good. You know, you could argue Portland, but, you know, Portland's Portland record's pretty good, though. They certainly play. They play better than you expect them to play. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. It's it's it's. It's hard to back Houston in this spot. I'm, I'm with you. They're you know, like you said. They've lost. They've lost and failed to cover six straight. Some of those by just they're getting killed. Monstrous numbers to monstrously bad teams. Plus, if you want to talk about Philly, all three of those games were on the road, which isn't that surprising because Philly is seven and eight on the road. 
But yeah, I told I told you this, as soon as I backed them on the road, I, I saw that road win over over Sacramento. They'd won and covered four straight on the road. I'm like, oh, they've turned that around. So then we played them against Portland. No, nope. that that kicked off their three game losing streak. So I think I said I like the over in that game. That game flew over, but I don't even remember. Either way, which, Philly at home, you, it's definitely an appealing option. Which game was that? The uh, the Portland game. Yeah, I, I said I like the over in that one. In that game, I think, lined in like the 240s. But mm, uh, it was two th- it went over by three and a half points. Oh, whatever. So, yeah. What do exactly call it? Flying over. But. I, th- I, th- I thought it was flying over, but either way. Yeah, I, I, so, you don't care about the – yeah, I mean. I, I, I can't back Houston. It, it's a fill your pass thing for me. But, once again, I cannot play this until I know if Embiid plays or not. Yeah, the, that's – it's critical that whether we find out whether Embiid plays or not. Although – you know, we talked about the we talked about the injuries last night with Brooklyn, and you, and we, you uh, could uh, stuck your stuck your nose up in the air, and you smelled that smoke, and you and you knew somebody else was going to sit out. I was, a, I was right. I mean, the live movement, and, yeah. Irving ended up uh, ended up sitting out because of his back. Um, but in beads, that's that's a different situation. I mean, they've he's irreplaceable. Yeah, I know. Embiid is probable. And I do think that him resting in the last game definitely bodes well for him to play in this one. Yeah. I just have to actually wait and confirm that. So Hard to believe that somebody that had to uh, had to opt out of their senior year or their last year in college due to back surgery and then had to not sit – had to sit the whole first year they were drafted. Injuries? Isn't that crazy? Having back problems. Yeah, what a shocker. Well, um, I'll tell you one thing, though. I said a couple weeks ago before Philly ended up beating Los Angeles – this is why Embiid's not going to win MVP. Yeah. He misses too many games. Which, yeah, don't get me wrong, there are more important things on the horizon for Philly, which is actually not embarrassing themselves in the playoffs for once. But at the end of the day, Embiid's going to miss too many games. Yeah, agreed. So he's just not going to win the award. You know, and I'll tell you what, what they don't talk about much is a flying on an airplane with back problems. Uh, that's no not part. Fun. No, it isn't. Uh, but you know, again, as long as Embiid goes, I lay the ten and a half there. I'm with you. Yeah. If I'm playing, I'm laying. Ben Simmons also off a 42 point game. Tobias scored 36 in the last game, so it's not like these guys have been struggling lately. Yeah, you uh, t- wait. Well, you told me Tobias sucked. I don't think Tobias is a great player. I wouldn't want him on my team, but he had 36 points in his last game. Okay, all right. He's a good offensive player. I just think he's a liability defensively, and he vanishes in big games. But I mean. He got buckets against you against Utah. I'll give him credit for that. So, which is something that not a lot of people have done lately, by the way. Yeah. So our second TV game, Scott, you got the Miami Heat and the Golden State Warriors. Come out and play. And they will be tonight, as uh, as they, uh, the Heat is the uh, is the visiting team. And what do we got for the line movement here, Scott? Looked like it opened up at one. I see one uh, and a half. And yeah, well, it was, it was it's gone the other way though. It's Miami by one, and now it is a Golden State by one. So you've had a a little bit of a flippity flop there on the on the line. Do you agree with that line movement? Uh yeah. I actually wrote an article about this game. Uh, I think it was for Statsalt.com, not for Winners of Winners.com this time. But either way, uh, I took Golden State. It's one of these situations where Miami. I said a couple weeks ago that I was done on Miami and how I just didn't want anything to do with them. Uh, I ended up back in the. I ended up back in them against Houston because I was required to back anybody against Houston because Houston has fallen apart. Miami did not look great in that game, but they ended up covering. And since that game, this team has looked awful. Played on the road against Utah and the Clippers. Utah, you lose by 18. I'll give you a pass because Utah right now is something's in the water in Salt Lake City. That's all I'm going to say there. Is but, it salt? Uh, could be. It's salt mixed with, I don't know, I don't really know what else is going in there. It's like uh, Michael's magic stuff from Space Jam. I'm not really it's, sure. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it turns out it was just water in the end, but I'll believe it when I see it. Because Utah. <laughs> any va- by the way, Scott, any value on Utah to win it all right the now? The truth is, is that I think there probably is some value on them to win it all because I don't think the market's going to give them full respect. I think they should be priced, uh, I'd say, lower than the Clippers. Just at first glance, they're not. I mean, you're looking at them in the West Western Conference, they're, they have the third lowest odds. I don't know how they don't have the second lowest odds when they're probably going to get home court throughout the playoffs. Do I think Utah's going to win the whole thing? No. Sure. I still would take the Lakers because Anthony Davis should be healthy by then, and I think that that playoff basketball is a different animal. But 
why do I have any faith in the Clippers over the Jazz? Because they have Paul George in a playoff series? Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's... I, I, I don't know why that would make me, you know, trust the Clippers more. I know. Both those teams blew a 3-1 lead in the, in the playoffs last year to Denver. I thought the Clippers' choke job was worse. So, I think Utah is kind of just responding. You blame Doc Rivers. That is correct, but at the end of the day, you end up getting rid of you. Wait, you blame Doc Rivers, but you love Quinn Snyder. I yeah, think Quinn Snyder both is of a, those teams choked choked to, to Denver. Well, a lot of it's also public perception because Doc Rivers has always been regarded as being a championship coach who's very, very good. I always thought that he was an overrated coach who should have won more. Quinn Snyder plays is the coach of Utah. Nobody ever talks about him, and I think he's a very good coach. So a lot of it's public perception. Okay. Like if Quinn Snyder was getting as much buzz as, he, as Doc Rivers over the last couple of years, I'd probably roast him too. But he hasn't. So that's that's the main reason why I give Quinn Snyder more leeway, if that makes sense. Well, you know what? I'm 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 a Mizzou fan, so I'm never going to get behind Quinn Snyder. That's fair. That's just never never going to happen. You understand my point though, because Doc Rivers is always regarded as being an all time great college bat, uh, an all time great NBA coach. Yeah. And he's blown three separate three one leads. So I don't know how people keep grouping him in these all time coach conversations. Going to the Hall of Fame as a coach. Correct. I think Quinn Snyder will go to the Hall of Fame when he retires as well. So Ooh, really? It I think he well, realistically You better win something. That's how all many head, uh well, did Jerry Sloan win anything? No, but he had longevity that Snyder's not going to have, I don't think. I'm just going to say, you think Utah's going to be in any hurry to fire a coach? They've had, what, two coaches in the last 30 years? The, Quinn Snyder will be there for as long as he wants. Mm, okay. I, I, tell you, I didn't say he's going to be in the Hall of Fame this minute, but at some point, I think he's going to be in Utah for the next 15 years. Utah has been kind of like the Steelers when it comes to commitment to coaches. They have, what, three coaches in 40 years? It just seems like they're just fine with keeping the same people over and over again. Uh, well, I mean, Jerry Sloan had a little bit more talent around him than Quinn Snyder. Correct. And now S- Snyder has a very talented team, and they have the best record in the league. Okay. All so, right. you know, we'll see what happens there. But I'm just saying that if you want to actually just go full circle there, I think there is value on Utah uh, to win the whole thing. Do I think they're going to win the whole thing? No. But the idea conceptually – a, the Eastern Conference. I don't trust any of these teams. See, that's the thing. If you're gonna, if you're gonna take them, you might as well, you might as well take them to win the whole thing instead of just the West. Because yeah, I, I don't. Well, I'll just talk about comparison purposes for the odds because the Clippers have shorter odds when they probably shouldn't. No, no. Well, I mean, and the Nets shouldn't have shorter odds than the Clippers, probably. So I think the Nets should. I don't. I don't agree with that. When you when you can't play defense, um, I. I don't make you the second favorite to win it all. I just don't. That's honestly fair. I, I just think that the Nets, despite all of the chaos and all what, whatever's going on, they're second in the East. So mm-hmm. it's not like this team, despite all the defensive issues and stuff, hasn't been winning games. They're still very – they're still doing well. It just, it just – it's glaring how bad the defense is at times. If I'm going to take a spin on anybody right now, I'm going to take a spin on the Jazz at 850. And the Sixers at 1,400. Jazz to win the title right now is 850? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you said, who's the other team? Sixers at 1,400. Okay. I think, that's a good, I think that's a good price. I think it probably should be closer to 10 to 1. I don't want anything to do with the Sixers. I don't think they win it. Don't get me wrong. Again, a, a team that can't win on the road, I, I get it. But I just think, I think, they're, I think they're undervalued right now. I don't know. I thought that road trip told me a lot. I don't, I don't know. I think they're undervalued. They're the, the <laughs> one seed in the East, and I don't have really any faith in them. All right, uh, I'll tell you what, though, it is definitely a plus to be the one seed because that team, home and road splits are once again ugly. Not as ugly as last year, but still ugly. Yeah, not that is, good. That is true. Not good. I'm trying to think if there are any sleepers that I actually like, and honestly, there are a lot of really just not good basketball teams. I know that wasn't really English what I just said, but usually you at least see syntaxes for. Person. I don't know. What do you usually see? Like five teams. That can potentially win it all. Six, yeah, maybe like you're looking around and saying this team has like a small flaw. I think every team in the league has a flaw this year. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I, I'm right like there. you. I hate the Bucks. I'm not. There's no chance I'm taking the Bucks. I Bucks Sorry. at seven fifty. That's that's just pissing your money up a rope. 
Uh, I don't want any part of the Clippers at 550. Um, that's, that's a joke line. Clippers should be closer to like eight to one. I mean, I, I hate to say it. I think I think the chalk is one of the better plays on there. I think playing playing the chalk, playing the Lakers at plus two forty. I mean, I get I gave out the Lakers to win the title like a month ago, but yeah, I, uh, I I think Utah right now, if you wanted to bet it based on what you've seen from every team, and if you are actually genuinely concerned about AD's health, then you should slam Utah. Because Utah's the second best team in the West. If you want to talk about just the chance to make the finals, I would. Are they the second best team in the West, or are they second best team in the West right now? Right now, the best team in the West. Okay, that's what I'm. But as the end of the end of the series, I would pick Utah to beat every team not named the Lakers. Okay. All right. I I can't argue with that. I I I mean, a seven-game series in the playoffs. I'm taking LeBron AD one. There's no way I'm not going to take the defending champions one because LeBron has made it to the finals. Pretty much every year for the last, I don't even know. It feels like 40 years. But Utah, I would take them over the Clippers in a seven-game series. I would do it. Because I do not trust Paul George being the, the I'd say, the guy representing where my money's going. Okay. I trust Kawhi. I don't know who else they really have. You have Lou Williams, who's a good offensive player. He's played a lot better lately after a terrible start. Abysmal defensive player. And Denver exploited him for a seven-game series. I don't think their bench is very good. And their guard play is a joke. Besides him, who do you have? You got Beverly, Luke Kennard. I mean, you don't, you don't have any guards. Yeah. Like you're Beverly, gonna Beverly's been hurt. I'm just saying, it's not like he's a great offensive player anyway. This team has no punch from the guard position. So, I got to think Utah right now is either – I don't know, you want to go 1A, 1B with the Lakers? I mean, that's kind of your argument. No, I'm, I still want the Laker to, Lakers at 1. No, correct, but I'm saying I think Utah is the second-best team in the West. But, uh, but I'll put you I'll, – I'll give you Utah in front of either team uh, from the East. Yeah. I'll put, you, I'll put Utah in front of the Nets or the Bucks. Um, the Clippers just seem to figure out a way to get it done. But, you know, that's, that's certainly where the argument is. But, yeah, I think Utah's. A, I think it's a good price at plus 850. Uh, that's one team I have to go out of my way to watch more. Is the clip? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, they're not on a lot either, so. No, correct, but I'm just saying in general, just based on the current run they've been on, they've won 18 of the last 20. They've covered the spread in 18 of the last 20. I mean, this is yeah. an unprecedented run. It's amazing. It, it really is. All right, so what do you got for tonight in this Golden State game? What do you want? I'm um, going Golden State. Okay. Uh, I know we got segued. I know we segued there for a little while there, but. I took us down the path. It's all good. I'm going with Golden State. Uh, at the end of the day in Miami, I wanted to like them. I took them against Houston a couple of days ago, but since that game, lost to Utah, which is why we got segued by 18. I'll give him a pass because Utah kills everybody. And then the last game was inexcusable. Uh, I said that if Paul George and Kawhi Leonard did not play, I thought the Heat would go from plus three to maybe minus three. They went from plus three to minus six and a half, and they lost the game outright by seven. Yeah. That's inexcusable. How do you lose that game? Jimmy Butler had a 30-point triple-double. How do you lose to the Clippers without, with no Paul George and no Kawhi Leonard? Yeah, that's, that's, that's just ridiculous. I, I mean, I was right when I, what, my injury uh, index has been pretty on point lately, talking about who's going to be resting and whatever. But I was expecting a line move pretty drastically, so I leaned Miami plus three because I thought that both of them were going to play. They didn't, and the line shifted nine and a half points. And it turns out you needed about – I don't even I, – I mean, it went the wrong way, I guess, because they gave up 125 points to the Clippers B squad. I can't take Miami. I think this team misses uh, Dragic, too. I really Dragic do. Dragic's a very good player. And they missed that sixth man um, coming it's in. It's not even just Dragic. Defensively, this team's been nowhere near where it should be. Yeah, no. They're, they're... I know offensively you can make the argument, you know, this team's had a lot of players miss games and they shot the ball so well from the three-point line last year, and that hasn't carried over. Duncan Robinson's been terrible this year. Heroes has been missing threes. I, I get all that. What happened to the defense? Because that was their calling card last year, and now they can't stop anybody. Well, I mean, they've, 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 they've stopped some bad teams. They've, they've had some decent performances. They've, That's they've, what I'm uh, saying, though. Like, they gave up less than 100 to, uh, to, to Houston and to New York, although they gave up less than 100 to Washington as well. So but I roast Golden State for being a mediocre team. Yeah. Offensively, they're a top 10 team in the league. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're putting up 114 points. points per game. So if you just gave up 125 points to the Clippers bench unit, why do I think you're going to stop Golden State? Because Golden State's offense, even though it pretty much is Curry and Draymond passing the ball, getting 15 assists a game over the last week, which has been kind of crazy. Right. This team's been an offensive juggernaut. I, I can't assume Miami's going to stop anybody. I'm with you. Any thoughts on the total? Uh, truth is, I would probably lean over, but I'd not really. I'd probably lean the other way. I'd probably lean the other way, and I'd just – uh, but I don't want any part of it. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to touch the total, but I have to kind of. I have to lean Golden State. All right, good. You agree uh, with that? Yeah, I do. Any any other games uh, grab your attention today? Well, looking at the actual card, really not that much talk about because a lot of the games uh, got yet some games that got canceled, so it's a shorter yeah. card than you were expecting. That's, that's going to be part. That's going to be part of the landscape for the next few weeks. Uh, how do I not like the Knicks tonight? I know that I'm probably the first person to say that in about 10 years but uh this Knicks team I said they play tough I said I called them crafty a couple days ago and they haven't lost since but if you want to actually go through Orlando this team's terrible we've talked about it before in addition to uh Gordon being out Fournier is questionable this team's injured now Cole Anthony is going to be out indefinitely and he was their starting point guard I know that he was a rookie and you know whatever but you know he had a fractured rib he hasn't played the last three games and they're one and two in his absence and <coughs> doesn't have many weapons I know that he hasn't had a great efficiency uh you know great season from an efficiency standpoint but he's averaging 11 points per game and this team is one of the worst offenses in the league so yeah it's hard to figure out where the points are going to come from against a pretty damn good Knicks defense I think that that's a decent correlated parlay if you want to talk about the Knicks and the under yep yep, so, yep. I, I you got Michael Carter Williams starting Mm-hmm. That's a pretty solid under any time he's in the lineup. So, I got to yeah. like the Knicks, don't you think? Knicks have won three straight. They've covered four straight. Louis uh, Randall's coming off a 40-burger. Yeah. They don't uh, – and they don't really care about being on the road. They can play – they'll play on the road as well. No, this team plays tough. And, you know, you give them props for it because the Knicks kind of just play the schedule. But these teams played earlier this season. It was a game that I took the second half over on. Because there was about a live over that saved about 30 points. And guess what? It still went under. Both teams combined for 175 points. And that was with healthy rosters. I'll take the under. Yeah. Yeah, 175. That's uh, disgusting. You know, that's like that's like an average Citadel game. Uh, that's an average Citadel half, yeah. But uh, <laughs> that was definitely a painful game to watch. I believe that was on MLK Day which I remember having some small amount of money on. But still, I got I to gotta take the Knicks. All right, very good. Uh, anything else? Not really. You have anything? No. No. Uh, by the way, quick that was the same game I liked. I, I like this Knicks defense. I don't know if this makes you feel any better, so you don't have to wallow in self-pity alone. I think I had a beat that was worse than yours yesterday when you had the Suns. What would you have? So I ended up winning my plays the day. I ended up uh, pushing one. I had Loyola Marymount minus three. They won by three. And I had the over in the Pelicans game, and that game went over by, like, 20. I had a personal parlay, and the final play that I had was in the Australian Open. I had Rafael Nadal to win. I had him on the money line. I got him at, like, minus 180, minus 185 or so. Yeah. And he ended up closing at around minus 230. Nadal was up two sets to nothing. In his career, in Grand Slams, Going into yesterday, going into the match this past morning, he had a two set to nothing lead in a Grand Slam, two hundred and twenty four times. His career record was two hundred twenty three and one. Huh. He lost today. He was up two sets to nothing, and he lost. And who did he lose to? He lost to Sitsipas. Okay, but. If you want to talk about probability, it's like a delicious dessert, by the way. I had a guy that was two hundred and twenty-three and one when winning the first two sets of a Grand Slam, and he lost. Does that make you feel any better? I don't know, but I think that I think that loss might be worse than yours. Uh, that's certainly statistically. That's a uh, yeah. I, I didn't even, you know, when I got on and whined about the losses, I didn't. I don't even... know what the odds are? What are the next percentage? Like probably one and a half percent, two percent. Yeah, I would. I would have thought. I would have thought at some point there. Uh, uh, probably five. You know, they they they've pretty much started the second half playing well. 
Uh, I kind of just meant on that BS, like a uh, percentage odds thing that ESPN does. No, no, I know. I'm saying, I'm saying five. I'm saying they were 20, 20 to one. Uh, yeah, that sounds, I mean, that's what the betting odds were uh, when in the live in game, I believe the Nets were as high. Couple, as- a couple of upsets yesterday, uh, you know, on the women's side, Barty got beat. Oh uh, so. yeah. Barty got beat, which is a pretty big one. I know Medvedev rolled, but. He's really 223 and one. Nice. And yeah. he just decided, you know what? Scott, I'm going to have to sabotage your parlay real quick. And I'm like, all right, thanks a lot, I guess. But uh, yeah, looking at actually the numbers here, I see around, uh, yeah, I see about nine. I, I, it's the percentage in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, I see 97.4%. Okay. That's the odds I see. I don't. I don't see. Any, I don't see anything higher. So, I see a ninety-seven point six actually. So yeah, you had a ninety-seven percent chance to win was that, that early in the second half. Uh, actually, late second quarter. Late second quarter. I was gonna say, did that even carry over into the second half? Uh, so late. Uh, second half was around ninety-five percent. Now that's 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 a ridiculous thing. By yeah. The way. But either way, we both had some bad beats there. I know that the Nadal one I didn't share with anybody, so it's not like it really mattered. Yeah. I actually hedged on on sissy pass, so I didn't lose money. I just broke even. But still, I mean, 223-1 and one kind of speaks for itself. I get you. All right, bud. Well, better days ahead. More, more, more tennis to bet on. So, all right, kids. And as always, if you're looking for more information on these games or any other games, don't forget to stop by and check out winnersandwiners.com. Deep dives into every game every single day. Hey, guys, stay warm out there, all right? This is a, this is a brutal, brutal snap here. It really is. I, I read 70. 73% of America's in the deep freeze. I don't know. I can't remember what they – they find it below below freezing or whatever it is. But You know how long the deep freeze is supposed to last for? Uh, I, we got about two more days here. It's supposed to be 40s over the weekend. So, And it's snowing here, by the way. We're – I'm supposed, to to, I'm supposed to go to Florida on Friday, but it's uh, it's supposed to snow on Friday. I wondered about you. I saw the I saw the forecast for the east for the east coast. And uh, is there I anything saw... better than being quarantined at an airport surrounded by a bunch of random people? I don't know, man. I just uh, we'll see what happens. But... I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for 2020 to be over. Oh uh, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I believe that <laughs> this isn't. I don't think this is 2021. I think this doesn't is, seem like it does it. 2020 part two. Yeah, I think we just did this. Mm-hmm. So. Let's see what happens. All right, bud. As always, uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop us a comment. Let us know what you're playing. If you got something cool cooked up, we always like to see what that is. Uh, for myself, for Scott Reichel, for all of us over here at Winners and Winers, appreciate you guys stopping by. Couldn't do it without you. Uh, come back and see us tomorrow. And uh, good luck on all of your plays today. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money back at the window. Stay warm. Stay safe, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow on Today in Sports Betting. Take care.